Greetings and Namaskar. My name is Shashi Tharoor and I'm delighted to send my best wishes to the organizers, speakers and participants at the 10th edition of the India Inclusion Summit taking place in Bangalore today with the vision of making India inclusive by 2030. I'm pleased to learn of all the good work this platform has done to stir up greater awareness on the need to mainstream inclusion as a concept and to celebrate the commendable work being done in this space. Each year on December 3rd, our society commemorates the annual International Day of Persons with Disabilities, established by the United Nations in 1992 to promote the rights and well-being of persons with disabilities in all spheres of society and development, and to increase awareness of the situation of persons with disabilities in every aspect of political, social, economic, and cultural life. And yet the occasion is also a stark reminder of how far we in India need to go in meeting the needs of the disabled. To reflect on just one such instance, I'm sure many of you today may recall the sad time when Sheila Flather, a British MP of Indian origin, Baroness Flather, received a Prabhasi Bharatiya Saman Award in India. It was just a few years ago and her wheelchair-ridden husband had come all the way from England to accompany her on this special occasion, but he was unable to go up on the stage with her because there was no ramp. The organizers offered to lift him up to their stage, but he rightly refused. Even as I burned with shame that we could not manage such a basic provision, even at such a high level occasion, I could imagine what others in the same situation had to endure every day in our India. About a billion people internationally live with a disability, with 80% of this being residents of the developing world. In 2007, the UN passed the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. This was a landmark step towards treating disabled persons as full members of society, rather than objects of pity or charity, or as was shamefully the norm for such much of our past, fear and even ridicule. A lot more needs to be done beyond global conventions, especially in countries like India, where there are 2.68 crore people with disabilities who form 2.2% of our population. And even that may be a gross underestimate. This is particularly of concern when we talk about our children who have disabilities, with almost 40% of India's children with disabilities having either never attended school or being forced to drop out. There are livelihood challenges as well. Of the estimated 2.68 crore people with disabilities in India, 1.34 crore are of employable age, that's half of them, but 99 lakhs are either unemployed or in marginal jobs. These figures suggest that the campaign for a more inclusive India is far from over and we have a lot of ground to cover and to prioritize if we are to be able to truly realize the aim of an inclusive Indian society by 2030. Which is why I am very pleased to learn of the work of platforms like the India Inclusion Summit, which has since 2010 championed the idea that everyone is good at something and accepting people of all abilities can allow us to truly move towards an India where nobody is left behind. Let me once again offer my congratulations and warm good wishes to the organizers and participants for a fruitful and productive summit. And I look forward to following your impressive work in the years to come and to joining you on a future occasion. All the very best and Jai Hind.